How's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from GigiCheck.com and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys a text effect that utilizes masking and some shape layers and a little bit of color to create a style that's both simple yet pleasing to look at. And that kind of seems like a uh, like the theme that I've been going for lately is simple to do yet uh, still kind of nice to look at. So let's show you guys exactly what we're doing here and let's go full screen so you can get a better look. So as you can see all we have here is some text uh, you know just thrown in right in the middle. I didn't know what text to do so I just threw in the word sideways and we've got these rays of light kind of streaking across our canvas here and it makes it look like our text is kind of fading away in certain places here. And of course we got a little bit of color in the background so it's not quite so boring. So anyway. Uh, this effect is pretty simple to do, but it, it might be a little bit confusing to people that aren't overly familiar with masking. So I'll try and explain this as best as I can for you guys, alright? So first thing we'll do is make our new document here. And you can set whatever uh, dimensions you want. I'll stick to the usual 1920 by 1080 with a 72 resolution RGB color mode. And you can set the background contents to white. So let's click OK and I'll hit Control Zero to zoom into canvas size here. And first up, let's double click the background layer and we'll rename this as BG for background. We'll click OK. And let's make this something other than white. So let's go to the effects icon down at the bottom of the layers panel. Uh, give that a click and go to the color overlay and simply choose a dark gray. It doesn't really matter what. Alright, so once we've got our background set up as a dark gray, let's make our text. So let's swap to our text tool by hitting the letter T. And you can use whatever font and whatever font size you like. But I'll just use Helvetica New with 220 points. And I've got the anti-aliasing set to smooth and set it to scale from the center. So anyway, let's just click somewhere on the document here. And let's type some text. Let's try, let's try check it this time around. And then hit the check mark up top to confirm our text here. And I want to make sure this is centered on the canvas. So to do that, I'll swap to my move tool by hitting the letter V. And let's select the canvas by hitting control or command A. And then up top, we'll see these, uh, these sets of boxes with lines going through them. We'll select the second one and the fifth one. And that should get it all centered on the canvas for us. And we'll hit Control or Command D to deselect. And this background's a little bit too light for my liking, so I'm actually gonna darken it up just a little bit more. By the way, I know it doesn't matter. <laughs> I didn't. I said it doesn't matter, but I don't know. I, I like these darker shades of gray a little bit more. But anyway, uh, we've got our text here, but we kind of want to hide it for the time being. So click the little eyeball next to the uh, text layer to hide it for the time being and we'll go to the left hand side and select our rectangle tool and make sure that you have the fill set to a white color and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and all we're going to do here is click and drag to create a rectangle and we'll just make it uh, I don't know around yay big and we're going to continue making rectangles across the canvas but before you click and drag to make a new rectangle, make sure you hold down the shift key and then click and drag and then let go of the shift key and make whatever shape you want. In this case, it'll uh, we'll do like a smaller rectangle like so. Uh, the reason we're holding down the shift key is so that way each rectangle is added to the existing layer. If you were to just keep uh, clicking and dragging without holding that shift key, you'll end up with a whole bunch of different layers off to the right hand side there. So. Hold down shift, click and drag, let go of shift, and that way we will be adding rectangles without creating new layers. So 
Uh, let's just uh, start making some some randomness here. Um, there's no exact science to this. It's to just uh, you know just create some sort of randomness to it. Uh, have you know a little bit of differences between the size of the rectangles, just so that way there's a little bit of randomness and uh, it just makes it look a little bit more appealing. Uh, whoops, forgot to hold shift on that one. My bad. Uh, and then, I don't know, just spend a little bit of time on it, see what you like, see what you don't like. There's no, there's no perfection to this in any way. So, uh, let's just make some smaller ones towards the end here. And one last one, like so. It doesn't matter if some of these go off, it's okay. So let's go ahead and make sure all of these rectangles are selected. So to do that, We'll go to the path selection tool by hitting the letter A. You should have a black pointer. And simply click and drag a selection around all of these rectangles. And you should see all of them have a bit of a highlight to them. And let's hit Control or Command T to bring up the transform tool. And then up top in the box next to the letter H, type in minus 30. And that will kind of skew everything at an angle of negative 30 degrees here. And if you want, you can reposition these so they're a little, a little bit more center. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And then hit the check mark up top to commit the transformation. We'll click yes. And next up, we'll blur these to make them look like they're streaks of light. So to do that, we'll go to filter, go to blur. We'll choose Gaussian blur and click OK. And we'll just keep a radius of about 40, maybe 60 pixels. I don't know. It depends on what size document you use. I like 40 pixels. We'll just click OK on that. And there you go. We should have our streaks of light. Looking pretty good. All right. So the next part is where we start masking everything to make it look like it's faded and things of that nature. And it might be a little bit confusing. So make sure you're paying very close attention here. So the first thing we're going to do is load the rectangle one layer as a selection. So to do that, we'll hover our mouse over the thumbnail for rectangle one, and while holding the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac, we'll give that a click, and you should see that we now have a selection around our streaks of light. So we'll go back and select our text layer, and then we'll go down to the layer mask icon, which is a, uh, a little box with a hole in it and click that while holding the Alt key or the Option key. And what that will do is that will create a layer mask on the text layer. And, if, and it looks something like that, which you can look at by Alt clicking on the layer mask, by the way. Uh, so next up, we need to create a selection out of our text. So to do that, we'll basically do the same thing. We'll Control click or Command click the, uh, the icon for the Check It text. And then we're going to uh, control alt click or command option click the layer mask icon on our text and that will uh, subtract the the layer mask from the selection that we made from our texts and we'll go back to our rectangle one and turn that back on and we're gonna alt click the layer mask icon at the bottom to create a uh, a subtracted layer mask well wow, that was a uh, that was really weird to say, but I hope you guys, hope you guys were able to understand that. Um, anyway, now we've got our text and our layer mask set up. Uh, let's go ahead and make some cool colors. Let's make a new layer above BG, and we'll call this our colors. And we'll swap to our brush tool by hitting the letter B. And let's simply change our foreground color to, uh, let's go for like a like a hot pink like color. So somewhere between red and uh, magenta will be kind of cool. Click OK. And I'm going to set my brush opacity to 50% up top. And we're simply going to just uh, let's just click and drag to add some color at the bottom here. And let's see what other color shall we do. Let's do let's do like a cool bluish color. And we'll do this up top like so. And then let's do like a greenish color for the side over here. Maybe we'll have that bleed into our our uh, magenta color. And then let's throw in a little bit of orange as well. So let's uh, let's do something like that. And let's size down our brush a little bit. 
and let's just kind of paint that over there. All right. So <laughs> that's basically all there is to it. And um, just to throw this idea out there, uh, you don't have to do this whole light streak idea. You don't have to blur out these lines. Let me go back to my original here. And if you don't blur out the lines, this is the overall effect that you'll end up getting. It's really intense, maybe a little bit even uh, hard to read, but still kind of cool. And if you wanted to, and we can actually go in here, uh, turn off the rectangles, and we've got some like chopped up looking text here. And we could, I don't know, duplicate it, invert the mask, and then, I don't know, just create some varying opacities or something like that. And you could even get a cool text effect that way. I think it would be kind of cool. And then we could go back and turn on our our rays of light or something like that. I don't know. You can create <laughs> uh, all kinds of fun stuff when it comes to masking. But either way, guys, I hope you were able to uh, enjoy this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I if you enjoyed the tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Give us a comment. And don't forget to stick around for our favorite comment section at the end of the video. And that's all I have for you guys for today. So I will see you next time. You have a great day.